Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. So, unfortunately, we have to go on. There were, would be many other questions to be asked. Uh, but I will give the floor to, to Valentina again. So thank you so much for this uh, really inspiring presentation. Now I invite Marco Marinucci, um, PhD candidate at the University of Milano Bicocca to switch his camera on and share the screen. He's going to present this paper called Social Exclusion in, uh, in Immigrants, How Intergroup Social Connections Influence Its Impact. Thank you, Marco, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Valentina. Hi, everybody. And today I'm going to present the work that is the core work of my PhD thesis at the University of Milano Bicocchi from a social psychological perspective. And I basically um, aim, aimed at investigating the psychological impact of persistent social exclusion in immigrants and focusing on how intergroup social connections with different social groups that are the national groups like Italians on, and other immigrants can influence the, the, the impact of social exclusion. So um, in 1995, Baumastro and in their paper, The Need to Belong, stated that human beings have a purposive drive to form and maintain at least a minimum quantity of interpersonal relationship. And those relationships need to be satisfying, positive, and significant. And the core question here is, is that they pointed that um, social relationships have a fundamental role for human health. But what happened when those relationships where people are not able to establish such important social relationships? It can be the case when people are socially excluded. And from a psychological perspective, social exclusion is defined as the experience of being kept apart from others, physically or emotionally. And social exclusion has severe impact both at the psychological and at the physical level, because, for example, social exclusion causes negative emotions and our feelings. It increases the risk of suicide. And from a physical impact, it can lead to several health conditions and even increased risk for mortality. And in our, in our societies, there are specific social groups like marginalized or disadvantaged social groups that are persistently exposed to, episode, to social exclusion. And those are groups like immigrants, homeless people, prisoners, and older individuals. Immigrants in particular are persistently and purposefully exposed to social exclusion along several levels of analysis, starting from the interpersonal individual level, because often immigrants are exposed to post-migration stressors that often include difficulties in establishing new relationship in the society or the, the sense of loss with, and of loss from home communities and people in their home country. At the intergroup level, at the social level, they often are victims of prejudice, racism, and hostility from the local communities. At the macro social socioeconomic level, they are often victims of discrimination in employment, housing, and policies. At, and even at the political level, they, they, they have limited social, legal, and citizen, citizenship rights. So immigrants are mm, one of those social groups that are purposively and persistently exposed to social exclusion. But from a psychological perspective, little is known about what are the psychological implications of such a prolonged experience of social exclusion. One of the most important models in this sense is the temporal threat model from Williams, where the, when the authors described how individual reacts over time to ostracism and social exclusion in, in general. In the beginning, people feel negative effects and a threat to fundamental being, needs of belonging, self-esteem, control, and meaningful existence. After, afterward, in the immediate stage, in the reflective stage, people try to cope with, the, with social exclusion, acting prosocially or aggressively, trying to fortify the threatened needs. And crucially, the model states that if ostracism, if social exclusion persists over time, people would inescapably enter the resignation stage. That is a condition characterized by chronic feelings of alienation, depression, helplessness, and unworthiness. However, this part of the model is the only part that talks about the, con the consequences of persistent social exclusion over time, but literature lacks of empirical evidence of this link between persistent exclusion and the resignation stage. L literature lacks evidence of the temporal framework that resignation takes to develop, and even if there exists some intervening factor that can shape the, the development of the resignation stage. So in this research project, I aim at investigating the psychological impact of persistent social exclusion, focusing on immigrants as a persistently excluded social groups. 
and also addressing the role of intergroup social connections with the national groups like Italians and with other immigrants in moderating the relationship between social exclusion and resignation over time. And to do so, uh, during my, the, the three years of the PhD program, I conducted five studies that I'm going to briefly present now. The first one consisted in a um, co correlational cross-sectional study that provided preliminary evidence of the moderating role of intergroup social connection. The study was conducted on 112 men, asylum seekers, that mainly came from Western Africa, and 86.4% came from Western Africa, like Nigeria, Senegal, Ivory Coast. Some of them came from Asia, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, and the remaining participants from other countries in Africa. And the data were collected within Italian Austin centers in CAS, the Center of Centre Accoglienza Straordinari, and we used self-reported questionnaires translated in English, French, and Italian. With, and we measured the self-perception of social exclusion in their daily life, the amount of intergroup social connections with Italian peoples and with Italian people and with other immigrants, and their level of resignation, measuring the four outcomes of depression, alienation, unworthiness, and the helplessness. And during the procedures, cultural linguistic mediators supported the data collections, and we also refunded the participants. Basically, the results point that social connection with other immigrants as a risk factor against the negative consequences of social exclusion. In this moderation analysis, briefly, we found that for those who were mainly connected with other immigrants, the thick blue line, social exclusion had predicted stronger resignation stage, whereas those who were less connected with other immigrants reported a lower relationship between social exclusion and resignation. Oppositely, we found that social connection with Italians had a protective was a protective factor against again, the resignation stage, because we found that those who were mainly connected with Italians, this thick blue line, in those who were mainly connected with Italians, social exclusion was not associated with the resignation stage, whereas those who were less connected with Italians presented a stronger connections between social exclusion and resignation. And these results held constant also when we considered simultaneously the connection with other immigrants and Italians. Those with prevailing connection with Italians showed a protective effect against the resignation stage, whereas those with prevailing, with prevailing connections with other immigrants show the risk factors against the resignation stage. So as a summary, we found with this study, we found we provided preliminary evidence of a link that mm, social groups persistently exposed to social exclusion can develop resignation stage, and also of the protective role of social connection with national groups that in this case were Italians, and of the risk factor for the consequences of social exclusion of being segregated and mainly connected with other immigrants. But here we could only have correlational data with self-reported measure. And in the second study, we aim at overcoming this limitation by conducting a secondary data analysis on an already, already existing data sets on first generation immigrants in Europe. This data set was part of the Cheese for You program that was an ongoing project in Europe on serving adolescents in schools. And we selected the 2,206 first-generation immigrant participants. The, the data com, came from Germany, the UK, Sweden, and the Netherlands, and they were connect, collected in the regular national school settings. Here, the peculiarity of this data set is that they measured social exclusion with an, object, an objective indicator. So rather than focusing on the self-perceived self social exclusion of the participants, they relied on the classmates of the immigrant participants. And basically, they computed this index that indicated how many times the classmates participants intended to exclude the immigrant participant. So it's quite an objective indicator of social exclusion that can uh, rather than a self-reported index. And the data, the data set also contained uh, information regarding intergroup social connections and on the resignation stage, health, psychological health outcomes. And basically the results confirmed what we already found in our preliminary study. So such as those who were mainly connected with other immigrants presented a stronger association between the objective social exclusion and the resignation stage. Whereas those who were mainly connected with native people in each country presented a lower association between social exclusion and the resignation stage. So in this study, we could replicate our mm, preliminary evidence of the of link between objective exclusion and resignation stage, and in particular of the moderating role of intergroup social connection. But we still here have correlational data, so we couldn't look at how social exclusion and how resignation developed over time. And we tried to do so in, in the third study. 
with his longitudinal study that was uh, continuously continued upon the collection of the first study I presented here. But in, in this longitudinal study, we aim at investigating the temporal development of the chronicity of social exclusion and of the development of the resignation stage. So um, it was a three wave longitudinal study and each wave of the other collection occurred at that three months interval. And the first wave of the study was the study one. So you know, it was the, the first wave of the study. And then we collected, we added two more waves, ending up with 70 participants in the end of the study. And in this study, we focused on the um, reciprocal relationship Sorry, over time. Three minutes to go. Three minutes to go. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, here we basically found that social exclusion predicted resignation stage after a six months interval. So in this study, we could found that we found a causal evidence that previous level of social exclusion predicted effectively resignation and that it occurred in a six months interval. In the fourth study, we looked at the, um, how social intergroup, intergroup social connection could moderate this longitudinal association. We, we use the same data set we um, I've just presented now, but we um, run specific, specific analysis on the role of intergroup social connections. So we, at first we computed, we um, analyzed how social connection with these two different groups occurred over time. And then we tested how the development over time of these different intergroup social connections affected the longitudinal relationship between social exclusion and resignation, controlling for previous level of resignation. And here again, we can confirm the pattern of results that I presented so far. So those who were mainly connected with Italians presented the negative association between exclusion and resignation over time, meaning that especially the most excluded immigrants benefited from the development of social connections with Italians. Whereas increasing connections with immigrants over time aggravated the impact of social exclusion. Okay, we skip on this and present the last study that is an experimental study that we um, conducted on both asylum seekers and on voluntary immigrants, um, like economic immigrants. So we could discriminate between the, the forced immigrants that were just arrived in Italy within a three years interval and the voluntary immigrants who have been long staying in Italy for at least are about 15 years. And the experimental study consisted in showing immigrants with eight scenarios, eight vignettes, that described either a situation of social inclusion or social exclusion that occurred by either Italians or immigrants. So for instance, here we show examples of vignettes are you are sitting in a crowded bus of Italians and nobody sits, sits next to you. And this is the exclusion Italian condition and so on. And here we measured the some intergroup social connections and the emotions that people would feel if they would be in the situation described. And here again, we could confirm this the pattern of results also on the immediate emotional impact of social exclusion. And we show that those who are mainly connected with other immigrants uh, presented a higher emotional cost of social exclusion, whereas those who are mainly connected with Italians presented a lower emotional impact of social exclusion. But this especially uh, in particular the moderating effect of connections with, its, with Italians uh, held only for forced immigrants, but not for voluntary immigrants. So in conclusion, in this study, I could, this is a map that describes all the findings. So we, we could um, show that social exclusion over time predict negative psychological effect, and that connection with low status immigrants, with other immigrants, aggravated the negative impact of, of social exclusion. Whereas connections with high status national group, especially for forced short-term short immigrants, protected from the, ne the negative impact of social exclusion. So in conclusion, we could find that we found that intergroup social connections can influence how social exclusion impact on the short term and long term health. And we allied, we could highlight the benefits of bridging connection with the national groups and the risk of societal segregation in particular um, against the negative implication of social exclusion, highlighting how social integration of immigrants are fundamentally based on the social relationship they can establish in the society. And thank you. This is the, the group I conducted research with, the, my supervisor and um, Professor Paolo Riva, postdocs and the research assistant. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Um, so we have uh, four minutes to go for, for questions. Are there any questions from the, from the audience? Okay, if not, I try to go first. <laughs> 
Um, so I really think this is a fascinating, fascinating work and is really embedded within uh, our main social issues and social problems related to um, migration and social exclusion. Um, that in the time of COVID could be even ex exacerbated because uh, I, um, I expect, for instance, uh, migrants and specifically forced migrants to be much more touched by uh, social isolation than, uh, uh, than other group of people. So what, 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 if, you, if you want to pick maybe one um, suggestion for policymakers or for um, like uh, third sector uh, professionals, what would you say? So we see that this negative correlation, we see this uh, important uh, relationship with respect to social connectedness, but uh, what we can do to tackle this issue? Well, I would say, try to um, structure occasion to put immigrants in contact with Italians. That is one of uh, a big issue because social psychological literature has been showing that intergroup contact between different social groups have um, very good benefits. For, exa for example, it can reduce prejudice among the majority groups. It can improve health, as I've shown in this presentation, among the minority groups. But something that is quite hard to, to realize as a practical intervention is putting people into contact because if contacts can work, it's very hard to put such different social groups into contact, contact each other. So if I would suggest something as to policymakers, it would be to develop a way to organize, to put people in contact, organize, I don't know, a specific intervention that could bring together such different social groups. Thank you, Marco. Thank you for your yeah. answer, for your presentation.